Hi there. In today's video, I'll discuss from a high level how to set up a Mesh-tastic device. I have three of them here on the table. Uh, this one over here is currently plugged into my laptop, and that's what I'll use to demo how to flash the firmware to the device. And then uh, this is just another Mesh-tastic device that I have set up that I use for testing. And then this is uh, what you would receive if you ordered this through Amazon, and I just want to go through a brief unboxing to show you what you'd be getting into. But uh, basically, you can configure these devices to work with both Android and Apple. I use mine on my phone, and that's what I have here. It's an Android device, and uh, basically, the setup for that entails downloading an app onto your phone or tablet so that way it can communicate with the device. I won't demo how to set up an Apple device, just Android, because as I mentioned, that's what I'm currently working with, but I will leave a link to the Mesh-tastic website. And they have a lot of documentation on how to set this up on Apple for anyone that needs that information. But before I dig into setting up the device, I wanna cover what Mesh-tastic is, how it works, and why you may wanna consider it as part of your comms kit. So what is Mesh-tastic? Well, it lets you use inexpensive circuit boards with GPS radio technology to communicate with members of your mesh network. And if you were to purchase one of these off the internet, I got this one off Amazon, you're going to receive a package that looks like this. And inside this box is going to be the uh, circuit board, also called a T-beam. On the back, there's a spot to mount your battery. Also inside this box is an antenna. And then there's some hardware to mount this OLED display. And a little bit of soldering is required. I have a display already soldered and ready to mount to a circuit board. So uh, there's some little holes on the top here. And basically, you just uh, plug that OLED display into the circuit board. And on the back, if I were to permanently mount this, I would uh, just solder that together. And then you screw your antenna on, and that's essentially what you get out of the box. Now, there are people that sell cases for these. They 3D print them and sell them online. They're pretty easy to find. I had experimented with 3D printing some of my own cases, but uh, that's a little bit of a work in progress. And, um, you know, hopefully as I get a little bit better at 3D printing, um, I'll make some cases of my own. But in the meantime, I have uh, this T-beam as well as this uh, other one over here that I showed you earlier that I'll be demoing the firmware on. But I've got that mounted in this case, and I was just kind of doing this to uh, test out the uh, Mesh-tastic software. And the idea was just basically I wanted to be able to throw this in my backpack and connect it to my phone and uh, use it while I was hiking. So once you get all this set up, and again, a little bit of assembly is required, but don't let that deter you. But once it's set up, members of your mesh network can see the location and distance of other members in range, as well as receive text messages in your private group chat. Meshtastic uses a technology called LoRa, and that's a long-range radio protocol. And in most regions, it doesn't require additional licensing or certifications. The GPS radio or T-beam, it automatically rebroadcasts messages, which create a mesh network. So everyone in your group can receive messages, even from the furthest member. As of this video, Meshtastic, I believe, can handle up to around 80 devices. The T-beams, as I mentioned, those can be paired with your phone or tablet, and that enables you to send a message to a specific radio independent of the internet. Meshtastic is also open source, and some of the features include decentralized communications. The T-beams also don't consume a lot of power, so you can expect excellent battery life, and uh, there's the option for GPS location features, and one of the other neat things is your communications are AES 256-bit encrypted. And only radios configured with your channel settings, which includes the encryption key, will be able to read your messages. If you'll recall from episode 20, 
I went into detail about AES-256 bit encryption. So I won't repeat those previous talking points, but if you're interested in more detail about encryption, then uh, perhaps uh, the information from episode 20 will be helpful. So when you send a message on the Meshtastic app on your phone or tablet, it's relayed to the radio using Bluetooth. So that's how you're going to connect the T-beam to your device. The message is rebroad, or I'm sorry, the message is broadcasted by the radio. And if it hasn't received a confirmation from another device in your group after a certain timeout, it will retransmit the message up to three times. Once another radio captures the data packet, it will check to confirm if it has received that message before. If it has previously re received it, then the message will be ignored. If it hasn't, then the message uh, will be rebroadcasted. So should you make this part of your comms plan? Well, the reason I like Meshtastic is because it's a great off-grid tool as well as, you know, the AES 250-bit, 256-bit uh, encryption. Additionally, Meshtastic can integrate with another application called uh, Attack, which has downloadable maps for land navigation purposes. I won't get into the attack integration for this video, but I'll leave a link in case uh, you're interested in reading more about it. But as far as it being part of your comms plan, I guess that really depends on your comms goals. If you're looking for something that's off grid and you know isn't reliant on the internet, then I think this is a great tool. Like I said, it does require a little bit of uh, setup finding a case for it, as well as um, soldering the OLED display on the circuit board. But that's really the hardest part about setting this up. Uh, aside from that, you just need to download an app on your phone or tablet and then uh, flash the firmware to the T-Beam. So I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, now I'll walk through the uh, process for flashing the firmware to the T-beam and in the past it was a little bit more labor intensive to uh, install the firmware and that was because you needed to install some separate software to um, install that firmware but now it's pretty easy now you can go to the Meshtastic website and do it and I have one of the T-beams connected to my laptop and so from the website if you click on downloads, you'll see another page and I'm going to be using the ESP32 web flasher. So I'll click on that and it'll take you to another page where you'll be presented with three drop down menus. And so the first one is to select your device and I'm going to pick T-Beam. Next is to select your firmware version and you'll probably want to select the latest beta version. And lastly, you can either update your device or you can wipe and reinstall. And I'm going to click on wipe and reinstall since I'm not updating anything. And click connect. And next thing that comes up is a pop-up. And, you know, it's just going to ask me to select my COM port. Mine's connected to COM port 1. So uh, if I click on that and then connect and then install T-Beam install again and it'll uh, start flashing the uh, firmware to the T-beam. And while it's doing that, I did want to mention something that's kind of important just about selecting uh, a T-beam device. So uh, one of the things that you'll want to make sure that you do is uh, purchase one that is for the frequency range for your country. So for the United States, the one I needed was uh, for 915 megahertz. And when you purchase one of these online, like on Amazon, um, in the specs, it should tell you how many megahertz that uh, particular T-beam is. There's a few different kinds, so um, you just want to get the one for your region. And I'll leave a link to a list of all the frequencies per region in the description below, so um, hopefully that'll aid you if you're um, purchasing one. Another thing are the uh, the batteries. So these um, TB board, T beam boards require 
uh, one 18650 battery. So if you go on Amazon and you type that in, you should see some search results for that. Uh, the ones that I purchased from Amazon are rechargeable. And lastly, you can run the T-Beam with or without the OLED display. I happen to be running uh, one of those without it. Uh, just because the case that I mounted it in isn't really deep enough uh, for the display and then uh, to be able to put the cover back on it. But um, I probably will switch that out at some point so I can run the display with it. Um, it is kind of a nice to have, especially if you're using the GPS functionality, but um, you're really going to be using the app on your phone or tablet um, when operating this thing. So uh, that's really just kind of the last step. I won't cover the uh, process for downloading an app. Most people should know how to do that anyway. So um, once you download Meshtastic onto your phone or tablet, then what you'll do is um, you just go into Bluetooth and then that's how you're going to connect your T-Beam to your phone. And then once it's connected through Bluetooth, then uh, you can go into the app and you can name your mesh network. And then uh, you can actually give your device a name if you wanted to. So uh, that's pretty much the process from uh, beginning to end. And I hope that was helpful. So that's all for now. And thank you for watching.